All right, last step. I already removed the bearings. Uh, the one bearing was, was pretty bad. Um, so I took that off. Uh, this was the bearing from the other side. This one wasn't too, it looked, looked totally fine, but I noticed some uh, coloration here in the roller, so I figured I'd replace that as well. Now, uh, when you do this, you definitely want to spend, you know, 40 bucks or borrow one of these uh, bearing pullers. I found this one on uh, Amazon Prime. Came in a day. I don't know why I didn't have one, but um, anyway, the, the instruction manual for Hearth actually says to uh, put a punch between the gears and use that to, to punch this out, which, yeah, that, that seems like a real good way to break the gears. Um, I don't think Hearth designed this thinking that this bearing might wear out, so... Uh, anyway, what I ended up doing is bearing puller worked out really well. Um, just to be extra careful, rather than uh, trying to squeeze it in there, which I, I think this puller is designed to do, it's got a knife edge, but just, just to be extra safe and make sure I didn't break those gears, I actually ended up cutting the race. You can see here, I, I, cut, the, uh, I cut the thing that contains the, the rollers, uh, and that way I could actually get my bearing puller on this little edge. Um, you can see inside, well on this one it actually came out by pulling on those wheels, surprisingly. Um, the other one was totally fried, and there's a little lip, um, the inner the inner race lip there. You can see that, uh, which this thing grabbed onto just great, popped it right out. It was took about 30 seconds. Uh, much better than breaking one of these teeth and having to replace this entire machined piece. So. Uh, I used the bearing pool to put the bearings back together again, too. Um, I did try heating these to 250 degrees. I don't know if I'd recommend that. Uh, it didn't really seem to have too much of an effect on getting them on for whatever reason. So, uh, But the bearing puller, again, I'd choose that. Squeeze it right together, and uh, yeah, looks pretty good. So tonight I'm going to go ahead and put it together, and uh, hopefully that's it. All right. All right, here are the new bearings installed. And that turns real nice. So and you can see here too how it spreads the the uh, just this is just lubricant left in the teeth. I completely drained this thing, but yeah, that means real nice. All right, so I just got to put it all back together again. Make sure there's no foreign material in there, which I don't see any. So now it's just a matter of remembering how it goes. All right, I went ahead and put the uh, transmission back together. I finally got all the parts. So I put everything back together again. Uh, I used blue RTV rather than make gaskets. I figured they probably didn't have RTV when they put this together the first time. Uh, I will say you do need to check the fit. <clears throat> there are some rings on here inside, the rings that hold the thrust bearings. Very important when you remove those plates that you pay attention to which rings are on which side. But also, if you replace it with RTV, that spacing may change. So, check that fit. Maybe look up uh, fitting taper bearings. Uh, anyway, as you can see here, I'm starting to put the electric back on. I'm going to build a stand for the fuel pump here. Uh, I brought the alternator back from the boat here. Here's the alternator. And uh, I'm going to make a little rack to put this all on. Uh, the control panel sitting right here. So I'll go ahead and mount that, mount everything else up so I can run it. 